Tonight I have the best and easiest job of this convention, introducing our First Lady. My life, my life has been better every day since that wonderful day Laura Welch said yes to me. At every stage of our journey, Laura has shown the grace and character I fell in love with. She's a wonderful mother who fills our home with love and kindness. She's a teacher who wants every American child to read and discover a broader world of ideas. She's a friend of authors who has brought talented Americans to the attention of the world. She's been a voice of calm and comfort in difficult times. I'm a lucky man to have Laura at my side, and America would be fortunate to have her in the White House for four more years. It is my honor. It is my honor to introduce my wife, my partner, and the First Lady of the United States, Laura Bush. and thank you George I like being introduced by the President of the United States and Barbara and Jenna you were great we're so proud of you both I also want to recognize the best father and mother-in-law anyone could ever ask for President Bush and Barbara Bush my husband's brothers and sister who have become my brothers and sister too. Thank you all. Thanks so much for being here. And watching tonight from her home in Midland, Texas, my mother, Jenna Welch. Hi, Mom. <laughs> And Vice President Cheney and Lynn and all the Cheney family, thank you all so much. Thanks for everything you do. Where are they? Oh, there they are. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody here tonight. Thank you all very much for the wonderful privilege you've given me and my husband of serving our great country. Our lives have been enriched by meeting so many of our fellow Americans. We've visited your communities, we've witnessed your decency, your kindness, and your character. I'm enjoying this campaign. It's reminded me of our very first one 25 years ago. George and I were newlyweds and he was running for Congress. Our transportation wasn't quite as fancy back then. An Oldsmobile Cutlass and George was behind the wheel. Even then, he was always on time and he knew where he wanted to go. You learn a lot about your husband when you spend that much time in a car with him. By the end of the campaign, he'd even convinced me to vote for him. This time, I don't need any convincing. <laughs> I'm so proud of the way George has led our country with strength and conviction. Tonight, I want to try to answer the question that I believe many people would ask me if we sat down for a cup of coffee or if we ran into each other at the store. You knowing better than anyone else 
You've seen things no one else has seen. Why do you think we should re-elect your husband as president? As you might imagine, I have a lot to say about that. I could talk about my passion, education. At every school we visit, the students are so eager. Last fall, the president and I walked into an elementary school in Hawaii, and a little second grader <laughs> there's Hawaii. A little second grader came out to welcome us and bellowed, George Washington. <laughs> Close, just the wrong George W. When my husband took office, too many schools were leaving too many children behind. So he worked with Congress to pass sweeping education reform. The No Child Left Behind Act provides historic levels of funding with an unprecedented commitment to higher standards, strong accountability, and proven methods of instruction. We are determined to provide a quality education for every child in America. I could talk about the small business owners and entrepreneurs who are now creating most of the new jobs in our country. Women like Carmela Scheifus, the only woman to owe a tow truck company in all of Iowa. <laughs> the, president's, the president's tax relief helped Carmela buy the business and modernize her fleet and expand her operations. Carmela is living proof of what she told me. She said, if you're determined and you want to work hard, you can do anything you want to. That's the beautiful thing about America. I could talk about health care. For years, leaders in both parties said we should provide prescription drug coverage in Medicare. George was able to bring Republicans and Democrats together to get it done. I, I could talk about the fact that my husband is the first president to provide federal funding for stem cell research, and he did it in a principled way, allowing science to explore its potential while respecting the dignity of human life. I could talk about the recent record increase in home ownership. Home ownership in America, especially minority home ownership, is at an all-time high. <clears throat> All of these issues are important, but, the, but we are living in the most historic struggle my generation has ever known. The stakes are so high. So I want to talk about the issue that I believe is most important for my daughters, for all of our families, and for our future. George's work to protect our country and defeat terror so that all children can grow up in a more peaceful world. As we gather in this hall and around our television sets tonight, Joshua Crane stands watch aboard the USS John C. Stennis. His brothers, Matthew and Nicholas, stand watch near Fallujah. And at home in Colorado, their mother, Cindy, <laughs> their mother, Cindy, stands watch too with worry and prayer. She told me all three of her sons enlisted after September 11th because they recognized the threat to our country.